Welcome back, everyone. On today's episode of the Grim Dawn Newcomer's Guide, we'll be touching on something that might get often overlooked, but it does play an important role when it comes to achieving some late game power, so it's going to be a pretty important talking point. This will also feed over into tomorrow's episode, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. And this is going to be one of the last couple episodes that you'll see in this series on the channel because we're actually just running out of stuff to teach. Now, I'll pose this question now, but I'll make a poll too in case some voting needs to take place. But if you guys have a specific type of video that you're interested in after the guide is done, we can start putting those out. I've got some other games in mind for some newcomer content specifically, but if you are only here for Grim Dawn, I can do things like build videos, nemesis encounters, crucible runs, whatever you want to see, let me know. I'm sure that there is a lot of interest in specific build videos because there are so many builds that can happen in this game. So that is at the forefront, but yeah, leave me a comment. Tell me what you want. We'll do it. Maybe, maybe. Definite maybe. I don't know. Some of you guys might have some pretty weird intentions, so we'll wait to see. Uh, but since it's a YouTube video, after all, let's talk buttons. What you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to like, and then you're going to uh, want to go ahead and subscribe, because that's the button with the next longest name. And then after that, you're going to do a little bit of commenting, because that one requires that you do type in a little tiny box after pressing the buttons. So we definitely have an order of operations here that you're going to need to respect. Now, we're going to talk about bounties. I've briefly mentioned bounties in other videos like the faction guide and other stuff earlier on in the series, but today we're going to put them under the microscope and talk about the genetic makeup of what is on the bounty table. And no, I'm not talking about the three-year-old chewed gum mound that the community has been nursing from birth. I'm talking about missions. Bounties are randomly generated quests that you unlock from the bounty table after earning enough reputation with the faction that you're trying to bounty from. Now when I say randomly generated, just know that I don't mean these are randomly created by the game at the time of clicking on it. There is actually a pool of bounty quests made specifically for each faction's bounty table, but which ones that you get are randomly determined when you click on the bounty. There are over 200 bounties in the game, and there are also hero monsters that are specific to the bounty tables, so remember that. There is also an option to cycle through bounties when you are uh, clicking on the table, so if you see one that you don't like or that you have done before and you know it's going to be a pain in the ass, feel free to cycle on to the next one. Also remember, once you make it to the Forgotten Gods portion of the game, the bounty table is for all of the factions. So it's going to generate reputations for the Cult of Dreg, Soleil, and Bismail all at the same time. So you don't have to worry about completing a bounty under just one at a time. You get the same amount of reputation for everybody, so it's pretty handy to know if you want to farm some Witch God faction gear. Now let's talk specifics! Bounties aren't like regular missions in that you likely won't get a lot of direction on how to complete them. Quest markers are minimal and you may find yourself exploring in circles while you try to find one specific thing to collect or monster to kill, but if you get really frustrated in trying to find stuff you can always default to the best search tool ever and you'll find a detailed map on locations from the Grim Dawn Wiki. No one will flame you for wanting to waste less time so definitely Keep your Googler handy because it will save you immense amounts of time unless you just really want to run in circles and grind out some monsters while you're chasing down maybe that one particularly uh, evasive bounty. Now the caveat to this is that you can only pick up five bounties per faction per game session. So if you're going to rip five bounties on the Devil's Crossing bounty table from the Grim Dawn Wiki in a total of ten minutes you're going to need to restart your uh, game in order to get more. So this can slow you down uh, just a little bit. It's not a huge amount, but it can be kind of like annoying to think about for sure. Uh, the good news is that if you're not into farming hard, if you're not into hard farming bounties at any given moment, they will give you, or they'll stick you with, they'll stick with you. Damn, I'm having a hard time talking today. They'll stick with you uh, for as long as is necessary or until you complete them. 
So feel free to pick up plenty of bounties from plenty of different tables because once you get them, you will not be able to get rid of them. If you're the kind of person who hates all the uh, text on the right side of the screen and having just mountains of it, remember, you can minimize that menu, number one, to hide it if it's really bugging you, or you can just, you know, not pick up a million bounties. Yeah. So if you need to farm some XP but don't have any big side quests or story missions, head over to the bounty tables and start collecting these. It's really easy, especially in the early game with Devil's Crossing and the rovers, because you can kind of uh, easily farm the reputation for those to get to their bounty tables relatively quickly, and uh, they have some pretty simple stuff to do. So if you get to a point of the game where you're like, I don't really want to do that boss or I don't like I'm having trouble with this X Y or Z then just uh, queue up some bounties get yourself some easy reputation and look for some easy faction gear too remember also that the reputation you gain isn't only limited to the completion completion of the bounty itself if you manage to find a bounty with a hero monster kill requirement you're also going to get the reputation from killing the mobs and the monsters that you run through and then big reputation bonuses from killing the heroes themselves. It might not register right away, but there's a big banner uh, that pops up saying something like, bonus reputation gained for X faction for killing heroes. When we kill those, uh, when we kill those big guys, you can obviously just see this pop off. So actually, we're about to kill a couple right now. Enemy boss killed right there on the screen. Reputation bonus plus 75 reputation awarded for all three of the cults. It is that simple. And if you need to keep track of the actual number uh, that you have for your reputation, remember you can go into the faction window, highlight what your, uh, your little, there are little markers in the reputation bar to show you what you need to get to get to like respected, honored, revered, those type of things. And then you can just see how full the, uh, the, bar is itself so you can get those specific numbers if you're only 75 points away from getting you know that next status then we just killed a boss and made it totally worth it yeah so nice and easy right um now what's more is that uh, some of these enemies actually cross faction lines too so you might need to kill some chthonian heroes for let's say barrel home and while you're doing that that reputation is also going to carry over to Kaiman's Chosen if you opted for that faction in Homestead. Now, that doesn't mean the bounty reputation itself is going to carry over, but the monster reputation will carry over. So you're really farming multiple faction reputation lines with just one bounty, and that's really, really, really helpful. Now, there are some downsides to bounties as well, so don't think we're all sunshine and sugar in this video. If you manage to kill the enemy that the bounty wants you to kill before you get to the bounty, then you won't actually be able to kill, uh, complete the, the bounty that you're in. Well, at least in that run, anyway. Uh, you'll need to restart the game, go back to the location for the bounty, and then complete it that way. It's unfortunate that it works that way, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it because, you know, free reputation from easy little quest is... Uh, Quote unquote easy, we'll say. Um, oh, right. But uh, yeah, a lot of times when you get into, uh, well, personally, when I get into farming mode, if I see a whole bunch of, um, you know, random hero monsters, I'm going to want to kill them immediately. And sometimes I'll kill them and not even register what their actual name is. Because the Grit Dawn monsters are all uh, unique and they're all crafted specifically by the team to be unique. Those names are important, so if you kill a bounty faction, or a, a bounty quest monster, and then forgot that you have done it, you may end up walking in circles for like 20 minutes trying to figure out where this dumb thing is, but you've already killed it. Speaking from experience, that is what I do on this channel, don't make the same mistakes as I do. Now, in every faction shop, there are items that you can obtain to help with your reputation gain. These items are also extended to bounties. So, when you get yourself to the honored reputation with a faction, you'll get access to a consumable called a writ. Remember, 
when you pick these up, they are not passive bonuses. You actually have to right-click on them to consume them. And that may be something that I mismentioned in a previous video. So do yourself a favor. Pay attention to me right now in the present. And uh, right-click those writs and mandates when you get them. Uh, so this item can only be used on the character that you buy it on, and it can only be used once, but you're getting 50% more reputation for the faction that you bought the writ for. Uh, you can buy one of these for all the factions and have that increased reputation game going at all times. So just by purchasing this item, you're going to get 50% more for every bounty that you complete. So if your bounty is worth 400 reputation, all of a sudden you're getting 600, re 600 reputation because you accessed the, uh, the writ for that specific um, faction. Uh, because the distance from honored to revered in those reputation bars is such a huge distance, I would highly, highly recommend purchasing the writs and the mandates. So, all that being said, if you take it a step further and you get up to the revered reputation class, you can purchase the mandates, which might seem a little bit weird because you've already reached max reputation, but mandates are going to give you 150% more reputation and can actually be traded between your characters, unlike writs. So writs are only possible with uh, the character that you're currently playing on, whereas mandates can be traded off to other characters. So, if you have yourself a brand new level 1 character and you want to start hard farming Devil's Crossing Reputation, you can give this item to them, knock out a couple bounties, and then launch up those early reputation levels very, very fast. Obviously, this isn't something that you're going to be doing on your very first character, but I am assuming after you've got one played, you're going to have at least enough curiosity to play another one, so giving them a mandate, especially for those early factions, is really incredibly helpful, and it may actually help you access some early faction gear that will make farming or leveling a lot easier. Now, we could go down the list of bounty options for each faction and point out how much reputation each of these provides, but there are resources for finding that kind of stuff out, so I don't think it's a very efficient use of time for this video. Instead, I'm going to tell you the biggest reputation gains for each faction so you can look for specific bounties for big payoffs. Some are really easy, and some may require a bit of googling because you'll have to find specific monsters to kill, items to collect, that sort of thing. The good news is, though, a lot of these are very, very big payoffs, so as long as you're getting access to those bounty tables and you can cycle through looking specifically for these quests, you're going to get some really heavy reputation gains. Now, for Devil's Crossing, the biggest reputation gain is really simple. Once you get the bounty uh, Calamity, is what it's called, all you'll need to do is craft one Calamity Relic and turn it into the bounty table. Chances are, by the time you're ready to start doing the bounties, you should have all the materials ready and uh, needed to craft these relics. So, that is going to get you a 400 reputation gain without a writ or a mandate. If you have yourself a, uh, a mandate going during this whole thing, that is, what is that? That's 800 plus 200. Uh, you just made yourself a thousand reputation, which is a massive, massive, massive amount, especially if you're in the early stages of the game and you are just holding on for dear life. Now, the rovers are the next uh, reputation, or sorry, they're the next faction that you'll be getting reputation for. These guys are the ones who uh, are just kind of walking all over the, the world of Cairn, and you can find them uh, and their bounty table in the Act 2 of the game, out in the, uh, the desert with all the bandits. But the rovers, since they're going to be asking you for a relic as well, all you have to do is craft the Equilibrium Relic, give that to them for another 400 easy, easy reputation. The only annoying thing about this one is that the rovers don't have a blacksmith nearby, so you can't easily craft it and turn it in like you can at Devil's Crossing. Devil's Crossing, Duncan's right there, you just whip it up, drop it down to uh, the bounty table, which is like right below him, 
and you'll have yourself a grand old time. Now, uh, Homestead is the next up, the next faction up, and it is a three-way tie for reputation of only 200 points, which you can obtain by killing monsters. The monsters that you need to kill are Gaulus, the Deep Dweller, uh, Gutworm, the Man-Eater, and then Swarm Queen Ravna. So Ravna is that boss that you killed for the Dermapteran questline. She's very easy to find if you've already done the questlines. So remember that that's there. Uh, Gaulus is next to one of the um, the Devotion Shrines in Act 3. So if you backtrack to those, I'm sure you'll stumble upon him. And then Gutworm, is, uh, he's located in Smuggler's Basin. But again, I'm, I'm probably not going to go further into detail on the monster locations. If you need to know where they are, <coughs> excuse me. Google them up. All you have to do is type in their name um, and then put a Grim Dawn in the end of it and the wiki will tell you exactly where you need to go. There are so, so many monster bounties it would just eat all the time for the next week. So, there you have it. Uh, Kaiman's Chosen is next up and they have another super easy relic delivery quest for you with a steaming hot 400 reputation to produce. You just have to give them a Ruination Relic. Uh, so again, no Blacksmith in their base, so you got to do that thing. But otherwise, nice and easy. Um, and then with as easy as that was, Death's Vigil is the exact same thing. So if you ended up going for Death's Vigil instead of Kaiman's Chosen, all you got to do is give them a Ruination Relic, and bam, 400. Simple. The Black Legion is, at this point, the easiest to farm reputation for because there is an eight-way tie for 400 reputation, but in doing that, these are all monster kills, so you are going to have to do a massive amount of exploring and grinding. So, with that being said, it's easy numbers, but it's really a lot of, probably, time investment. The, uh, the list, though, includes Bloodlord Thelonis killing uh, Corpus, the, the monster Corpus, killing Harath the Slaughter, killing the Herald of Flame, killing Luthus Balak, killing Padmanestia, killing Ikrix the Reaver, and then finally killing Kilrian the Tainted Soul. All of these enemies are pretty beefy, and they'll take some travel time to get to, so make sure that you've got your map handy. They're also all over the entire world, so be prepared to go literally everywhere. The Outcast has the highest reputation gain of any faction so far, but is going to make you kill key dungeon bosses. So you'll be getting 750 rep for killing Alchemos, which is the Steps of Torment key dungeon, and then 750 for killing Sharzul, the Harbinger of Chaos, which is the Bastion of Chaos key dungeon boss. The Coven of Ugdenbog is going to ask for a Mistborn Talisman Relic for a 400 reputation, but this one relic uh, requires an immense amount of farming if you don't already have it. So, uh, it is, um, I can't remember the name of the enemy, but uh, when you go into the Smuggler's Pass, uh, it, there is, uh, there's two trolls that I think you can farm this from in there, uh, but the, the chance to obtain the recipe is extremely low. So, uh, you're going to have to hard farm for this one a bit, making it a easy but also very difficult um, reputation thing to obtain. So, maybe put that one on the back burner. Maybe find some other bounties at, uh, at the coven to make it go quicker. Uh, Barrowholm wants a Corruption Relic for 400 Reputation, so I'm sure you can start to see the pattern there. All the Relic bonuses are going to give you 400 Reputation, uh, but they are asking for some pretty thick crafting materials from you. So, even though they're really easy to complete, they're going to give you a big bonus because uh, they are taking some precious materials. The Malmoth Resistance, or as I like to call them, the Sewer Surfers, are going to ask you for a Sanctuary Relic and have 400 reputation waiting for you that is just slathered in sewage. And then last but certainly not least, there is the Witch God Factions. And these lads don't want any relics, but they do have a five-way tie for 200 reputation upon killing Azaleon, the Griffin Sovereign, Brother Sigarius, 
Grimaw, the Corvin Titanovore, and finally Sister Crimson. All of these enemies are locked to the final act of the game, so they're fairly easy to find if you're just doing some plain old exploring. In fact, if it hasn't happened in the video already, it I, I think it will. Um, I can't remember, because Azaleon, uh, the, the Griffin Sovereign, is one that we have <coughs> happened upon in this playthrough, and he's always in the same spot. So... Maybe we'll get... I think I might actually be coming up on him right now. If not, my apologies. He's still over around here near the uh, the Valley of the Chosen. But, again, uh, you know, start up the old Googler if you're having trouble, trouble finding people because some of them do like to hide in caves and random um, nooks and crannies that maybe we're not looking for. But, again, 200 reputation for killing all of those guys. Just remember that... It is split between all three factions, so if you're if you're only hooked up to one, don't worry, you're going to get it for all three. Hmm. That is going to do it for this video, though, everybody. Bounties are really, really, really simple, but very necessary for late game relics and augments. Augments are going to push your gear even further than what it can roll for, so we are going to do some more talking about that in the next video in depth. Uh, but ultimately. These videos are going to definitely push towards the uh, later stages of the game, and we're going to actually finish off the very final quest, um, quest line, main quest line of the game as well over the next couple videos. So keep your eyes out. That is it for today, though. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody, and I will see you next time.